Okay, my name is Matthew Randall, and uh, what we're going to do is look at how to import a FBX file created um, from a Vicon Motion Capture System uh, into Motion Builder and apply it to a character. Now, the steps that I'm doing um, can be applied to other formats as well. Um, there just might be a little bit more work you have to do in the mapping process, and I'll talk about that later. So you could apply this to, say, importing a BVH file, okay? So first thing we're going to do is import the motion that we want to do. So I'm going to import our motion file. So I'm going to motion file import. I'm just going to use the Cameron uh, punching um, motion file. And I'm just going to go import. And if we play that through, we can see uh, there's some motion on there. Great. There we are. So we can see that motion file. Brilliant. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to, I'm just going to bring my um, character onto the stage that we want to map to. Okay. So I'm just going to go into, um, inside the tutorials, we already have some pre-built characters that we can use. So I'm just going to use the gremlin just for a bit of fun. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to go FBX, uh, no animation. Okay. And here's our gremlin character. Okay. Now what I want to do is I just want to go X-ray. Okay. And just have a look at this model in a bit more detail. Now what we can see is um, our characters are made up of three things. One is the mesh. So this is the mesh that we can see here. Okay. Then what we have, so this is the mesh that our character is, is made up of. Then what we have is we have our um, actual skeleton here. Um, uh, so um, it's actually, uh, yeah, it's made, we have a skeleton that makes up this model. Okay. Um, and obviously the mesh is bound to the skeleton. So when we move the skeleton, we move the model. But often what we want to do, so we've got a mesh and a skeleton that make up this character, but we also have something called a control rig. Often what we want to do is be able to just move the hand and then these other joints move with it using inverse kinematics. And that's all informed using the control rig. So when we look at any character, we've got three elements that make that character up, the mesh, the skeleton, and the control rig, okay? And what this is showing in terms of character controls is the control rig. This allows me to select different parts of the gremlin's control rig, okay? And in Maya, a control rig is called a character. So if I go into my scene and I go into characters here, you'll see there's a character called, called gremlin, and indeed, that has a control rig, okay? All right? Okay, so that, that gremlin there is our uh, uh character uh, uh, is the control rig for the gremlin okay now the reason i'm kind of highlighting this is that in order to transfer the motion on from this skeleton to this character what i need to do is i need to do it via a control rig okay so i can't just take it from this skeleton and apply it to this skeleton what i need to do is i need to give this skeleton a control rig and then i can move the actual um motions between the two uh, control rigs, okay? So in order to do that, I need to give this skeleton a control rig. In Motion Builder, this process is called characterization, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on, inside templates, I'm gonna click on characters, okay? And I'm gonna drag this character onto the middle hip here, okay? So this character is effectively a control rig that we're gonna to apply to this um, uh, to to this skeleton, okay. So because I've put it on, because I've dragged it onto this middle hip, it's saying, "Do you want to characterize? Do you want to characterize this skeleton?" Yes, I do. Okay, and uh, is this a biped character? Yes, it is. Now, um, and I'm going to click yes. Okay, so now this character would have been characterized. Now, one of the things to point out is in order to do the characterization, you need to have your actor in a T-pose, okay? And often it's useful to clean up the T-pose. If I look at this skeleton here, you'll see that the T-pose isn't a perfect T-pose here, and we could clean this up a little bit more, okay? Um, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to stick with it. But I could have just selected these joints and rotated it and given it a better T-pose. The reason you need it for a to be in a proper T-pose is so that the uh, movements accurately map from this skeleton to this character. And that's it's, it's the, that T-pose that allows that accurate kind of mapping and translation, translation of the mo uh, movement. 
So now what we have is is we've now have another character here called character that we've just put in here. I might just rename this. Actually, I'm going to go uh, rename. I'm going to call it Vicon, okay? Because that's our Vicon action, okay? That we created. Um, and now what I can do once I've done that, I can in this I can in this character control area here, I can select Gremlin. Okay, and I, what I can say is, I can say I want the source to be Vicon. Okay, so now when I play this back, what's happening is our gremlin is being controlled by the Vicon motion. Okay, and all that movement is moving across via the control rig that we've just applied using the characterization process. One more thing I want to show as well is if I go onto this Vicon character. Okay, I'm just going to double click on it here. Okay, um, and then you and then we'll see it in here. Okay, and then if I click on, if you look at the base um, parts of this model, what we'll see is um, the bits, the various parts of the skeleton have been mapped to this control rig, and you can see the mapping here. Okay, and by dragging onto that hip and hit clicking characterize. This process has been done automatically, okay? So this process has been done automatically. Now, it might be if you've got a BVH file with slightly different names, you'll have to manually do this. And what you'll need to do is just sort of drag uh, each of these skeleton parts onto, um, uh, onto each of these points in the mapping list, okay? But for our... But, but, because our naming conventions match up, the naming conventions of our FBX file match the naming conventions of the characterization in Motion Builder, um, uh, we didn't need to do that. Uh, it all went automatically. Now, the final thing we need to realize is actually, at the moment, what this is doing is it's retargeting this motion live. What we want to do is actually bake this motion in. So what we want to do is, is because at the moment, if I go back to the Gremlin, and just switch it back to its own control rig, you'll see that there's no animation on the Gremlin. The animation hasn't actually been put onto the Gremlin. The Gremlin is just simply following the Vicon motion, okay? So let's set the Gremlin to follow the Vicon motion again, okay, by setting this to Vicon. And then all we want to do here is click in here. We want to go um, uh, bake to skeleton and bake to control rig. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go bake to skeleton first, Okay, and so it's baking this motion, this Vicon motion, to the skeleton. And can you see we've got Gremlin control rig, and now it's follow, it's only following its own its own control rig, and that motion is now baked onto that Gremlin. Okay, the final thing I want to do then is bake it onto the skeleton itself. So I'm going to go bake to skeleton. Okay, and that's now baked onto the skeleton. And the final thing I want to do now that I've done that. I can now actually go file and I can save this character animation. So this character animation is ready to be applied to the gremlin at any point that I want. So I can now just pull this in and apply this directly to the gremlin without having to do any characterization or retargeting. And I can just save this wherever I want. So for example, I can just save this onto my C drive uh, and I'll just call it uh, gremlin punch, okay. And I'm just going to click yes. Oh, I don't have permission to save in this location. Surely I do. Uh, D drive. I'll just save it in here. Save. Okay. So I'm going to save it there. Yes, I want to save those takes. Okay. And what this allows me to do now is if I go into this story mode, and I'm, I'm not going to demonstrate this now, but I can go to this story mode and I can just load this in now as an animation clip and work with this as an animation clip inside my story mode with my gremlin okay so that's how to bring in a motion capture file and retarget it to a character inside of motion builder